رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أهلا وسهلا مرحبا welcome everyone um, today inshallah ta'ala this is our sixth session of this particular course and uh, today is our second session where we are talking about um, the 11th unit the 11th unit which was about people and places inshallah today we're going to continue with Nila al Karim or a Tuesday session normally it's mainly about um, it's mainly about strengthening what we've done so far and spending as much time as possible in the uh, workshops inshallah okay Bye. I've po just posted the links on uh, on the channel for YouTube. Um, let me share the screen. One minute. Okay, we are. Uh, live class six. Okay, so the very first thing I would like to uh, talk about is um, the supplementary workshops. <laughs> so that has been in the making for a long time. Uh, I was really hoping to launch it this Monday, but the scheduling software is just too complicated and it took me quite a while to figure out what types of workshops we're going to do, how the timings are going to work, uh, onboarding the teachers, getting them to sign up for the scheduling software, showing them how to use it. All of those things just took a bit longer than expected. However, inshallah, things seem to be uh, ready now, inshallah. So, I think I've shown you last time how you should book it or how it goes. I think I've demonstrated that last time. Uh, maybe I can demonstrate it again. Let's, let's try that. So, basically... Um, this is how it's going to show up on your side. Can everybody see my screen? I you to wear. So you're going to have the uh, workshop as, as a link somewhere here. If I can find it. I think it's here. I think my internet is a bit slow, isn't it? Is, it? is it breaking up, everyone? I just feel like everything is slow. Is it my internet or the laptop? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, okay, so two things. Number one, I have posted the quarterly test albeit a bit late and you'll find it under week two that's when it should have been posted uh, under week two post unit exercises so quarterly test units nine to ten and for those of you the first time you're doing a, a an actual test then what you need to do that the moment you open the widget or the moment you click on it a timer will start, will start as you can see and that timer will continue to count down even if you navigate away even if you close the browser okay so once you make sure that before you attempt it, you have some time on hands, number one. And once you do start the exam, make sure you continue, inshallah. I'm sure I shouldn't have shown you the first question, but uh, no problem. Regarding the workshop, then it is going to be password protected. That password will be provided in the um, Telegram groups, the private Telegram group. Uh, mainly because it's something that I can only offer to premium core students. I can't offer this to the South Bay students um, because of the limited number of seats available. Obviously, we're trying to keep the workshops small numbers so that every student gets as much time to practice as possible. So it's only available on the premium cohort there. So because we have on the uh, upgraded South Bay students to the premium cohort in terms of getting their work marked and they're on the same learning portal as the premium cohort students, but workshops are still only for premium cohort students. So I will provide you with the password 
I really, really hope I can remember what it was. Okay, seems like great, alhamdulillah. Uh, all right, seems like I got rid of that link. Anyway, I'll, 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 I'll show you another time, inshallah, how that works. I think I've shown it last time anyway. You pick the time and then you book it. So we'll leave that, inshallah. Going back to um, the actual workshops, what types they are and how you should book it. I'm going to give you detailed instructions on that now. So what you should do is, inshallah ta'ala, I'll very quickly go over this. This is as important as the lesson because uh, I'm sure all of you are going to be asking questions later. Anyway, so there are six workshop types. We're going to start with two at the moment. So I'm going to start with the speaking and the pronunciation one. Uh, I've got details, information on each and, and what it involves and the purpose of each. I'll share that with you, inshallah, in the channel. So the speaking one is very similar to the one we do after class. And just so that you know, what is the main difference between the workshop we do after the lecture and the workshop we do during the week? The main difference is that the workshop we do after the lecture is specifically for that unit of that week. So we only practice the words and the grammar concepts that we've learned in the lecture. Whereas the supplementary workshops, they include everything you've done so far. Okay, so it's kind of like just to keep everything alive that you've done so far is going to be a, a, a much more open, if you like, workshop using all the vocabulary and the grammar concepts you've learned so far. Okay, so we have the uh, speaking one, which is similar to the one we do now in the workshop, whereby, you know, you're getting opportunities to speak against speaking prompts. We have pronunciation practice where you specifically train on those sounds you can't pronounce properly. We have the reading fluency which again is you read the dialogue as fluently as possible. We have the writing one uh, where you write a sentence according to the prompts and then the teacher and other students, they read and they critique your sentence and, and so on and so forth. We have the reading comprehension and this one's really important, which is you read a passage without vowels, without harakat. Okay, this is the best way to practice your grammar. There is no better way to practice your grammar than to read a book that doesn't have fatha kasr or dhammas. And this is how students of knowledge, they actually practice when they read to Mashaikh. Okay. And I've mentioned this before that sometimes people are like, what's the point of reading to a Sheikh? Shouldn't the Sheikh know the book? Shouldn't the Sheikh explain the book to you? No. So as students of knowledge, you go and you read to the Mashaikh, you read books to them. These books, generally speaking, don't have harakat. So this is kind of like you practicing your Arabic. Okay? Because you have to figure out what, where, where to put the fatha, where to put the dhamma, where to put the kasra. So that's the sort of uh, workshop we're talking about here, where the teacher gives you the opportunity to read, and then whatever mistakes that you make, uh, he stops you there, and then he explains the grammar, reason behind it, based on the level you're at. And then finally, we have listening and spelling, where the teacher dictates a sentence, and then you type or write it, and you know uh, it's corrected. So this is more about practicing your spelling, and also your sound, or your listening skills, if you like, sound recognition. So these are the types. How do you schedule them? I've already shown you that the total schedule is we have four workshops every single day for this per week. So there's 16 workshops in total. Okay. Um, each workshop is limited to two per day. Okay. So that's the maximum because we have about eight students. So we want like four students per class. Then each workshop type can only have a maximum of two. And each attendance is limited to four to five. Now, which workshops are going to be done? Then that depends on your needs. Okay, so when it comes to booking your spot, um, then I would say those of you that have commitments or special interests, so you have come in, you're only available at specific times during the day. Uh, obviously, the workshop times are between 9 to 11 or 9.30 to 11.30, roughly, Saudi time, which is about 7 to 9 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., whatever country you're joining, uh, 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 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. UK time. Okay, so if you are only available at 7.30 till 8 o'clock, then I would say beat everyone else and make sure you book the workshop that you want at that time. And then everyone else is going to see how many spots are available for that workshop. So it's a first come first serve basis in terms of what type of workshops are being done. Okay, so once a student books a workshop, there's only four available every day. Once some students book the workshop type that they want, then everyone else has the choice to join that workshop. Okay, you can join it if it's already scheduled. 
Uh, so if you have specific needs or interests, make sure you beat everyone else, inshallah. And I also send a list of events that are happening each day on the Telegram group so that you know what has been already scheduled by other students so that you can join. What to do before and after the workshop, make sure you prepare and provide some feedback. A few important notes, confirm your attendance in the email that you receive and please cancel if you can't make it so you free up space for others. We don't want people to just book and not show up. And you have to book a minimum four hours in advance. So generally speaking, book a day before or early morning, inshallah ta'ala, so that you're not disappointed. And also one final thing is student-led workshops. And this idea, I, I, I got this idea from the brothers last week, no, last lesson on Saturday. Um, after the workshop was over and I had to leave, mashallah, they continued speaking and talking for another hour, an hour and a half amongst themselves and practicing their Arabic. And uh, so from that, we got the idea that why not have extra workshops that are student-led? So any of you that want to spearhead a workshop whereby I give you the learning material and the, you know, the spin the wheel and everything that you need speaking prompts, and then you can just book it with your fellow classmates and then just come together and just talk and speak and practice your Arabic, inshallah. So that's open for anyone who's interested in that. Right, so first thing we're going to do, inshallah, is we're going to... Um, tackle some of these workshop some of the uh, things we're going to be doing in the workshop inshallah so there's not much new to explain today I've already explained the grammar concepts on Saturday related to past tense and present tense verbs that's what we talked about okay and we'll do a bit more practice on that in a moment okay but before we get to that um, let's make a few sentences inshallah so let me actually send the WooClap link so we'll practice here together until you get the hang of everything. And then after that, inshallah ta'ala, uh, you can uh, do it in the workshop. Are there any questions by the way? Okay, so let me send the WooClap link. So you have the link in the chat. So the first question is going to be create your own sentence using the prompts or the uh, vocabulary, the categorized vocabulary. So write a sentence using the Okay, so I'm going to show you the list of words. There you go. Can you see it? No, you probably can't. One sec. Okay, there we go. I hope you can see all the words, huh?
Okay. No submissions yet. Okay. أنا لا أحب الأسواق لأنها تسرق وقتك. أحسنت. Okay. Again, these words over here, they're not there to limit you. You can use extra or other words if you want. Okay? But they're just there to uh, pick your mind or basically to... Uh, Okay, did not want to do that. Abd uh, Rahman Hadi. Okay, Rahman is calm, no problem. Al Ustad Yentakilu Kariyatahu. Yanahu Yetazawaju Al Mat in Medina T. Al Okra. Okay, <laughs> hope you're not talking about me. <laughs> um, Bayib. Here you would say ينتقل, not قريته. You're not Ustad is not moving his whole village. Okay. Okay, ينتقل قريته that would basically mean or you would give the meaning of ينقل قريته as in he's moving his village, right? Because ينتقل انتقل it's a verb which is lazim. It's a verb that doesn't have an object. So I move to another city antaqilu ila madinatin ukhra or antaqilu min qaryati okay so you can't have an object okay so when you say yantaqilu qaryatahu that kind of like sounds like as if he's moving his his town or his city okay not moving from so he'd be al ustadu yantaqilu min qaryati he's moving from his village okay okay and min madinatin ukhra, not al ukhra. Why? Because ukhra here is an adjective. Okay? So there has to be agreement. So Medina doesn't have alif lam. So why did you put alif lam on al ukhra? Okay? Unless al ukhra is someone or some kind of name, then it would be mudaf mudaf ilayh. But that's not the case here. You're trying to say another city. So min. Uh, من مدينة أخرى not من مدينة الأخرى أنا سعيدة لأنني وجدت هذه الدورة ما شاء الله أريد أسكن في القرية إن شاء الله أوكي ممتاز أريد أن أسكن في القرية إن شاء الله ينتقل يوسف إلى مدينة لأنه جامعة قريبة شقته جديدة. Okay. Um, ينتقل يوسف إلى مدينة لأن جامعته. When you say لأنه, then this ha over here, it returns back to Yusuf. So that basically means you're saying Yusuf is moving from his city because he is a you know a, a, a close university. That Yusuf is not. You're talking about the Jamia, you're talking about the university being close to his new apartment. So you would say, Yantakilu Yusufu Ila Madinatin, okay? Lianna Jamiatahu, because his university. So this who, which belongs to Yusuf, returns back to Yusuf, should be added to the Jamia, his university. Lianna Jamiatahu Karibatun is close, min. You always have to use min when you say qariba. Min shukatihi al jadida. You have to put alif lam here. Now, someone might argue, Ustad, didn't you just say Medina al ukhra was wrong? That Medina doesn't have alif lam. Al ukhra shouldn't have alif lam. So why should we here say shukatihi al jadida when shukka doesn't have alif lam? Why should al jadida have alif lam even though it's also an adjective? Shouldn't there be agreement there? Who can answer that question? Why is it shukatihi al jadida, not shukatihi jadida? Who can tell us? You can type in the chat, or you can even pick up the microphone if you like. Just put up your hands. I have a mushkila. Raise your hands, or you can type in the chat. Inshallah. Why should this be shukatihi al jadida and not shukatihi? 
جديدة Okay, so mudaf mudaf ilayh. Okay. But no. If you mean shukka in al jadida or mudaf mudaf ilayh, the answer is no. Al jadida here is actually an adjective of shukka. It is an adjective of shukka. Just like medinatin ukhra is also an adjective. Ukhra is an adjective of medina. Because you are describing the shukka. Okay, I, I understand. Because Jadida is an adjective of shukka, we're describing the shukka, we're talking about a new shukka, his new shukka basically. But why Al Jadida has to have Alif Lam? Shouldn't there be agreement between shukka and Al Jadida? In other words, shukkatihi, is that definite or indefinite? That's basically the question. No, none of you get it. None of you get it. The question is shukka, shukkatihi. قريبة من شقته شقة this word شقة is it definite or indefinite that is the question okay someone said definite okay so if it's definite then the adjective should also be definite it should have ألف لام it should be شقته الجديدة now the question is why is شقة definite because جديدة is not of شقة and شقة is definite because it's مضاف إليه is definite نعم أحسنت أحسنت أخي الكريم so basically, shukka is definite. Why is it definite? Because it is Muhammad's apartment, or Yusuf's apartment. Sorry, in this que in this question, this answer, uh, this sentence, Yusuf's apartment, his apartment. Now, since Yusuf is definite, then the mudaf ilayh to Yusuf is also going to be definite. Wadih, is that clear? Okay. So generally speaking, whenever you have mudaf mudaf ilayh, then the mudaf ilayh is going to have alif lam. If it's definite, but automatically the mudaf, the first word, is also definite, even though it doesn't have alif lam. Why is it definite? Because it has been, it has been attached or it's been, um, um, it is, if you like, ascribed to another noun that's also definite. Okay, so since Yusuf is definite, then his apartment's also going to be definite. Okay, if I say, for example, um. Allah's messenger. Allah's messenger. Rasulullah. Okay? Rasul is definite. Why? Because it is Allah's messenger. We know exactly which messenger we're talking about. We're not talking about any messenger. We're talking about Allah's messenger. So we don't say Ar Rasulullah. That would be a problem. Okay? Because Allah is not an, an adjective of, of a Rasul, right? Now this mudaf mudaf ilayhi Rasulullah. But we don't add Alif Lam to Rasul, even though it's definite. So the point I'm trying to make is this. Okay? We all know the importance of knowing when nouns are definite or indefinite. We all understand that. And that it really makes a major difference in your understanding of the sentence. But alif lam, adding an alif lam, is one of the signs of something being definite. It's not the only sign. There are 101 different ways, be exaggerating there, but there are many ways for a word, a noun, to be definite. Okay? One of the ways is that it is mudaf ilayh. Okay, that is mudaf, sorry, that it's mudaf to another word that is definite. That also makes it definite. That's one of the ways. Okay, is that clear? Okay. So that was a major learning opportunity. Jazakallah khair. Anyone, uh, the person who wrote that sentence. We learned a lot from that sentence. Okay. Tayyip um, Mumtaz. We've got a long sentence here. رأى هناك ضوضاء وازدحام وتلوث محمد ينتقل إلى المدينة دلهي في الهند. I think uh, probably the sentence should start here. I think so. محمد ينتقل إلى المدينة دلهي في الهند. رأى هناك ضوضاء وازدحام وتلوث. I wouldn't say رأى. I wouldn't say he he saw there uh, you know pollution and and traffic and ضوضاء which is you know. Noisiness. You don't really see those things. Instead, I would say, وَجَدَ هناك. He found there. Or he, I know in English, he saw there or he saw what well, might make sense. But in Arabic, we'd rather say, وَجَدَ هناك. Okay, he found it to be a place or he found there. ضَوْضَى and izdiham and تَلَوُّثُ But nevertheless, it's clearly understood what you're trying to say here. قَدْ زَادَ التَّلَوُّثُ وَالضَوْضَاءُ فِي مَدِينَةِ برمنجهام. <laughs> Ma'ashallah. Yantaqilu Hamidu min Pakistan ila Jeddah. 
مدير الشركة يزور إلى المدينة الهادئة لا لا إلى هير از رونج اوكي بيكوز زار يزور از ا فيرب از متعدي ات تيكس ان اوبجكت دايركتلي ات دوزنت نيد ا بروبوزيشن ات دوزنت نيد الى ان مين ان دي سورت اوف سو سم فيربس دي تيك ان اوبجكت دايركتلي دي كول فعل متعدي اوكي سو دي دونت نيد ذيس بروبوزيشنز ويرز سم ووردز اذر ووردز اذر فيربس دي دو نيد الى اور مين اور ذا لايكس ان اوردر تو هاف ان اندايركت اوبجكت ود دي كول ان اوبجكت اوف بروبوزيشن جار مجرور بيسكلي اوكي Um, but no, Zara, he, this, the correct here would be مدير الشركة يزور المدينة الهادئة خلاص الهادئة, again, you have to add time مربوطه over here for agreement مدينة is feminine, هادئة also needs to be feminine Okay, المدينة الهادئة ما شاء الله, ممتاز, بارك الله فيكم Those were some great sentences قال محمد ليس سعيد في المدينة لأنها ليست نقية so again, ليست نقية مربوطة وهي ليست جميلة وهي ليست هادئة all of these uh, ليست you forgot the yeah okay ليست and also agreement between uh, you know the two between the verb ليست and هادئة and قال محمد أنه You would say أنه, not هو, أنه, but that's something we haven't done yet. طيب, ممتاز. ما شاء الله, تبارك الله. Okay. Let's go on to the next uh, speaking prompt. What do we have? بسم الله. Uh, let's, let's use these speaking prompts over here. Okay. So, Uh, write a sentence using the speaking prompt. So let's pose that question to Google. As a matter of fact, feel free to write long sentences or feel free to even write a paragraph if you want. Okay, let me just show you the speaking prompts. No. There we go. These are the prompts. So basically, this is based on this week's um, theme. Okay. So this week is all about exchanging and discussing your opinions. So you can ask someone why they did or leave something, right? And then you can express your opinion regarding a topic. Okay. Or you can, if you want, answer that same question you asked. You can turn it into a dialogue. And then explain your reasoning when asked about your opinion. Why is that the case? Okay, so to give you an example, someone might say, as we saw in the book, لماذا تركت المدينة? Okay. Then he would say, for example, المدينة فيها ضوضاء وتلوث or whatever. Okay. Or تركت المدينة من أجل العمل. Or تركت القرية من أجل العمل في المدينة. Or, تركت, المدي... تركت القرية لماذا تركت القرية تركت القرية للعمل في المدينة So I left the village li... li means for for reasoning Lam التعليل is called It's the lamb that you give for reasoning So when you come to this part make sure you use the lamb It makes life easy for, easy for you li. تركت القرية للعمل في المدينة Or for example لماذا اشتريت البصل اشتريت البصل للطبخ I bought onion in order to cook or for cooking and so on and so forth and also you can uh, write a paragraph or sentence talking about your country and city where you live now or where you're originally from either way you can mention the positives and negatives about the place you live or lived in you can talk about your to work or school as we've seen in this unit already أذهب بالقطار تستغرق الحتو Saturn, one is, تقريباً, and so on and so forth. Again, we're not leaving this week's theme. Yes? Um, and finally, you can inquire about someone else's commute to their place of work. You can say, for example, كيف الرحلة إلى العمل? كم تستغرق الرحلة إلى المدرسة? And so on and so forth. Okay? So I'll give you a minute or two to write yourself a sentence. And then we will again give feedback on that and benefit from the learning opportunity.
entities that you present us. لماذا تركت بريطانيا؟ لأنني أريد أن أهاجر إلى المدينة المنورة. أحسنت. أحسنت. Or to be more concise, you could say للهجرة إلى المدينة المنورة. And we've mentioned this many times before. Native speakers, they speak much more concise. And non-natives are very heavy in their use of verbs. Okay, so here لأنني أريد أن أهاجر You got two verbs over here We can replace All all this whole sentence Or all these verbs with just one lam للهجرة للهجرة إلى المدينة Much more concise Okay uh, But again, inshallah, that will come with time Inshallah, will come with time Okay I think internet today is really bad, isn't it? One second, let me see if I can do something about it. What other do we have? Do we have? Um, لماذا البريطانيون should be with a ta حزينون Okay, that's a question. لماذا البريطانيون حزينون لأن الملكة ماتت نعم صحيح طبعا البريطانيون في الغالب الغير المسلمين إن وجدنا من المسلمين من حزن على موتها الله المستعان طيب لماذا أنت إلى لندن doesn't make sense ولندن بلد 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 بارد لماذا أنت مسافر you mean I think you lost you missed the word there لماذا أنت مسافر إلى لندن نيجيريا بلد حار ولندن بلد بارد طيب أحسنت لماذا تنتقل إلى لندن؟ هي تنتقل نعم seems like you've corrected it أحسنت. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? I'll give a few more minutes. I think some of you are still writing their sentences. أسكن في قرية هنا أسكن في قرية هنا هي هادئ وجميلة جدا هنا هي هادئ لا أو جس هي هادئة وجميلة جدا again هادئة it has to be uh, it has to agree with the uh, قرية which is feminine so هادئة also needs to be feminine okay هنا في قرية جبال كثيرة We'll talk about that later, why it's kathiratun. Wabuyutun qalila. We'll talk about it later, why it's qalila. Okay. لماذا تتعلم اللغة العربية لأنني أريد أن أفهم القرآن أو الحديث بفهم صالح الصالح. أحسنت. ما شاء الله. Some beautiful sentences there. لماذا هاجرت للسعودية؟ هاجرت لأنها دولة مسلمة. أحسنت. طيب. ممتاز. جدا جميل. Okay, finally, we're going to do this, inshallah. We're going to spin the wheel. And we're going to make some sentences, inshallah. Bismillah. Oh, no. I just closed the wheel clap. Not smart. Oh, second. Uh, 
we open it. Let's uh, exit this question. Next question is going to be, right, sentence. Following the given, what we'll call it pattern, okay? Okay, so one moment. When I open this. Okay, so this is the pattern we're talking about. So we have uh this is the gender so either male or female then you ask limada why then you have a verb okay so let's do it actually so okay so gender is male okay so limada taraka okay or you can address the person and say tarakta it's up to you okay you can either talk about someone and say limada taraka Khalid or Yusuf or Muhammad, or you can address a male and say Limada Tarakta. Then you come with the object of Fur be. Okay, so Limada Tarakta al Madinata. Limada Tarakta al Madrasa. Why did you leave school? Why did you leave the city? Whatever it is, come up with something that is suitable to the verb. So that's the question. Then you have to come up with the answer. Okay, so you have to repeat obviously whatever verb is here. And the uh, will be now when it comes to repeating the object, you can either say it again or you can be concise and use a pronoun. What do I mean by that? For example, Nimada Taraktel Medinata Taraktuha. Okay, Lil Amali for the sake of work or Lisekani or to live Fil Qariya in a town. Okay, so you can come up with every reason it is that that person might have done the, the action. Okay, so let me let's give it another another another, another turn. Okay, please get a hold of the. You have to understand the pattern. Okay, so again, it's going to be masculine. Limada. Now here, it's probably better to use present tense. Again, you can use past tense or present tense. Up to you. Okay, so here I would say, for example, Limada turidu, and you can come up with anything. Limada turidu had al kitab. Okay, and then you can answer and say, Uriduhu. I want it for reading. Or Uriduhu li al I want it in order to give it as a gift. Or Uriduhu, whatever reason you want, you want that book for. Um, but make sure that you repeat uh, whatever is in the question. And you can, like I said, you can either use a pronoun or you can say Uridu al Kitab. You can repeat the noun itself. It's up to you. More concise is that you use the suitable pronoun. But make sure the pronoun has agreement. Huh? If it's, for example, if you said here, Limada turidu, uh, let's say, Limada turidu hadhi shukka. Why do you want this apartment? Yes. Then make sure you say, Uriduha. Lianaha jamila. I want it because it's beautiful, the apartment. Okay? So again, make sure you use the right pronoun if you're going to be using a pronoun. Otherwise, just repeat. The noun itself and say Uridu Shokata, Uridu Shokata, Lian Hajamila. Okay? Or Uridu Shokata, Li Ibni. I want the apartment for my son. Okay? Right. So I'll leave you to that uh, on WooClap. I think we can close this one.
Okay, did I spin it? Okay, I don't know if I spin it, but there you go. لماذا ترك السنغال هل تركه لأنه وجد العمل في في مصر نعم جميل لماذا ترك السنغال تركه لأنه وجد العمل في مصر ممتاز طيب uh, here we have لماذا and then we have the verb فضل okay you might not be familiar with this verb because every verb that we've done so far some of the verbs they only came as present tense in the book beginning till end but I took every verb and turned it back or returned it back to its past tense. So if Faddala doesn't ring a bell, then try and think of its present tense. That's the one we've in the book so far. And feel free to use it as present tense in your sentence. Okay? لماذا تريد معجما عربيا أريدها لدراسي لا لدراستي comes with a tamar boot at the end. Lidirasa. It's called dirasa, not diras. Diras is not a word. It's dirasa. Okay? Uriduha lidirasati. Now the question is, why did you say uriduha? You have to ask yourself. Limada turidu mu'jaman arabiyan. Where is the feminine noun? Such that you use a feminine pronoun. Uriduha. This ha over here. Where does it return back to? This ha over here. It turns back to who? To what? All we can see so far is Limada Turidu. Okay, this is masculine because you didn't say Turidina. Mu'jaman is a masculine word. Arabian is a masculine adjective. So why did you say Uriduha? Uriduhu Lidrasa. Okay? Or Uriduhu Lidrasati. Think of Lidrasa sounds it is better. لماذا تفضل عصير؟ لماذا تفضل عصيرا مفعولا به؟ Every word that comes after these verbs over here is going to have a fatha, my dear brothers and sisters. It's مفعول به. It's an object. Okay. So those of you that use feminine ver- um, nouns, you get away with it because تامر بوت no alif comes after it. But if you're going to use a masculine one, لا, you can't hide عصيرا. I want to see the alif. The alif that shows me there's two fathas there. I don't see the alif. I know that you either wrote tufadilu asirun or asirin, which is both wrong. So, لماذا تفضلوا عصيرا؟ لأنه لا أحب ما. لا لأنه. Who does who return back to? And Wallahi, this shows you, my dear brothers and sisters, the importance of pronouns. Wallahi. <laughs> the number one thing that people struggle with are pronouns. Okay. Because when it comes to pronouns, there's so many things involved. We have to think about the gender. We have to think about the number, if it's singular, plural, or, 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 or dual. We have to think about if it's first, second, or third person. We have to figure out who it returns back to. So here, لماذا تفضل عصيرا? لأنه This who لا أحب ما So لأنه here, all I can assume is it returns back to عصير. Okay? Sah? Okay, because it or the asir, juice, you didn't say anything about it. After that, you started a complete new sentence. La uhibbu ma or la uhibbu ma. That's a complete new sentence. Here, you, this sentence is incomplete. Li annahu, because it is. Well, asir, what about it? You didn't see any, say anything. Okay? If it returns back to asir. If you are trying to say, because I don't like water, and you didn't actually want to refer back to the asir, then you should say, li anni. لا أحب الماء لأني because I don't love water you see see how your use of the ha here is wrong because ha returns back to عصير you from my understand you're trying to say because I don't love water so you should say لأني the ya which is for the متكلم for the person who's speaking لماذا فضل وليم دين الإسلام ويليام لماذا فضل ويليام دين الإسلام لأنه دين الحق الله أكبر uh, Suhailun is Suhail actually. Suhail is written with a C, not with a Sad. Suhailun, لماذا فضل اللحم? لا. Look, there's a rule in Arabic language. The question word always comes first. Always. Okay? The question word always comes first. Unless it's preceded by a preposition or something, a harf. The question word comes before all other nouns. Okay? That's why 
if you want to ask a question, you say كم هذا الكتاب. You would say, for example, مسموك. You don't say اسمك ما. مسموك. You say ما first. Okay. So here, the it would be لماذا سهيل or لماذا فضل سهيل اللحمة. That would be most correct. لماذا فضل سهيل اللحمة. لأنه لذيذ جدا. نعم. لماذا فضلت شقة تو فتحس فضلت لمشاهدة again فضلت what you have to use a pronoun that returns back to شقة فضلتها للمشاهدة even though that doesn't really make sense لماذا تفضلين الطعام المطعم لا لا this is مضاف مضاف إليه this is not an adjective so الطعام shouldn't have ألف لام it should be لماذا تفضلين طعام المطعم not الطعام المطعم if you say الطعام المطعم مطعم becomes an adjective so is there something called a restaurantic food لا you have restaurant food i.e. food from a restaurant food can't be restaurantic if you like <laughs> whatever how you want to call it right so مطعم is not an adjective of the word of the, of the, of the food it's rather uh, the place where that food is found so طعام المطعم not طع... الطعام المطعم again the importance of definiteness and indefiniteness لأنه لذيذ جدا أحسنتم بارك الله فيكم خلاص we're uh, coming to the end of today's lesson at least I feel like most of you have uh, a better grasp now of what is awaiting us or what's awaiting you in the workshop inshallah if you still have any questions let me know also, you would have noticed that we've spent a lot of time today on, on WooClap and answering these sort of questions. And also, you, you noticed that there were a lot of, uh, if you like, learning opportunities. And I would love to know your feedback on that. We kind of did things a bit differently today. Instead of explaining a lot, we spent most time on, uh, on actually, you know, uh, doing things so what I would want to know is um, what's your feedback on today's format because I personally believe that these learning opportunities which other people call mistakes <laughs> I think they're the most valuable thing because you know it shows the students weaknesses it shows if you like, where well, we can work on more. Um, it also gives me a better understanding of what needs more work. And I think you as a student really benefit from it. When you make this same mistake multiple times, then that's the only way I think that you can avoid these sort of mistakes. So please share with me what your feedback is on today. When I say feedback, uh, be as, as honest as possible يعني. I also like the critical kind Sorry about that. That was an urgent message from one of the teachers I had to attend to. Um, it was a mini workshop model, okay? I think if everything that the chapter covers is done, then it's good. However, I do. However, I do like the structure. So for me personally, better left in the workshop. Okay. It's a good way to practice and get immediate feedback. May Allah raise your rank. Ustad, 
this program is the best program ever. Jazakallah khair. Must increase our ability to write and from and I believe this is a way for us to increase our ability to write and form proper sentences, learning how to write and form sentences and learning from our mistakes and on the correct path in becoming fluent in this language, inshallah. Mumtaz. Good to see and learn from the students' answers. Also, a self-check on our level and what to work on. I think overwhelmingly was a good, okay. Um, of course, there's more of this in the workshop. The only difference between the only difference being between this and the workshop is that the workshop, it's live. It's, you're speaking, you're not typing. Less time for you to think and, 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 and hit backspace and change your words, which is even better, you know, for, for developing these sort of skills naturally, you know, and that's what we want. Uh, this approach to teaching students to practice writing sentences is tremendous. Your teaching methodology is excellent. Jazakumullah khair. I could spot some, spot some weaknesses with regards to answering the questions why I like this format when mistakes come up. All right. Hayakumullah. Uh, inshallah, keep the, the uh, feedback coming. Inshallah, if there's more. Barakallah feekum. Inshallah, we'll break up. I think today, mashallah, we finally managed to finish on time, I suppose. We haven't done that very often. I'm sure the workshop teachers will be happy. Let me see if there are some questions quickly. Um, no, okay. All right, then, inshallah, I'll see all of you in the workshop. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Like I said, inshallah, by tomorrow, you'll be able to book in those other supplementary workshops. They will be ready. And once again, I apologize for the delay. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.